first reading, Psalm number 37. Now, I know this psalm might not be what many would take as a gospel text, and it is addressed to the Lord's people, to believers, but there is such a plain contrast set forth here uh, between the end of those that trust the Lord and the end of those who are wicked or essentially do not trust the Lord. Uh, time and time again, David makes the contrast primarily here to encourage and to comfort the Lord's tried people, tried when they see the prosperity of the wicked in this world and their own trials and difficulties. Uh, but it also, I'm sure, uh, is an argument for, for any, for uh, those who have not yet put their trust in the Savior, that it is far better, far wiser to, to put our trust in him and to look to him uh, and to follow him, uh, both in one sense in this world, but above all, for all eternity. David, it is a psalm of David. It is a, a teaching psalm, an instruction, uh, as Paul says in uh, Colossians and Ephesians, that we are by our singing to teach one another the word of God. And if we were to sing it, it would be teaching us to trust the Lord and not to be troubled, not to be overly troubled by what appears to be the situation in the world. It would appear to be written by David uh, in his old age. He speaks in uh, Verse 25, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And it is good that one who is older and has time to see much more of life, to reflect upon it, is able to give such a conclusion. The temptation, particularly when we're young, I think, is to take a snapshot of the world as we see it there and then, uh, and from what we see, to conclude that it would be foolish to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, that uh, people that follow him are uh, destroying or, or doing much harm to their prospects in this world, their prospects of happiness or their prospects uh, of uh, advance and so on. It is better to be clever, to go the way of the world, to follow those who prosper in the world. And one might, uh, at any time in one sense in history, uh, take a, a, a sort of cut, I can't remember what they call it, taking a sort of horizontal cut through the, the landscape, uh, through what appears to be, and one might say at any one point, uh, the, the Lord's people are in great difficulty. But if you look at it over a longer period of time, uh, as David does here, and particularly in the light of eternity, things will appear very different. Uh, the first verse, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. It was said, of Queen Elizabeth I, when she was in prison uh, under her sister Mary in the tower, in great danger, but she uh, confessed to being envious of the milkmaid much, but uh, she did not know at that time that she would have 44 years of very glorious reign and rule. Uh, and the temptation is for people uh, and particularly when we're younger, to, to look and to see, not maybe so much as to envy, but to emulate and to copy those who prosper uh, or appear to prosper and do well in the world. And uh, David 
would warn us and set before us the danger of despising the Lord and forgetting the Lord and following the world uh, because it is far better from his observation and obviously under inspiration of God to, to follow the Lord and his way. Uh, it begins, uh, it, it may be not so easy to, uh, to expound it all verse by verse, but we, we shall see that there's contrast after contrast. And in one sense, I'm sure a poetic, a literary way uh, to show verse or verse after verse, the, the dangers of the wicked and the blessing and the hope of those that trust the Lord. But uh, I'll just begin, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Don't look uh, at those who reject the Lord and go their own way uh, and are troubled by it. That's why he's addressing believers, fret not thyself. Don't be tempted to copy them. Don't be tempted to despise and re uh, leave the Lord's way and to go their way. Because, he says, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb, that they are no better ultimately than grass that is so swiftly cut down, that so soon withers, particularly in these hot climates when the sun is uh, uh, and the heat comes, how quickly the grass is no longer green, uh, and that soon they shall be no more, as he will go on to say. And David could say from his own experience, he had faced great difficulties from those who ultimately hated the Lord, from Saul and others, his own son, Absalom. Uh, and though they, for a while, were in great strength, Saul was obviously king uh, and had many, much of the people on his side. Uh, yeah, and David patiently waited for the Lord's deliverance. And he could say, soon they will be cut down. And it is true. And it is a terrible, in one sense, a fearful truth that life is short. Uh, and, the, uh, and though men may live into their 80s, 90s, yet it is but a brief time in re relation to eternity. Uh, and all will soon be going to meet the Lord. We all must meet him. Uh, and in one sense, it is for all men, no matter how long we live, it is but soon. Uh, so somebody saying, I don't know if Jeff Bezos, the Amazon uh, chairman, whatever he, his title is, uh, saying he is obviously seeking to, to look to, to live forever, but it cannot be, it will never be. Men will do these things freezing and so on, but it cannot be so. All must soon meet the Lord. And he would rather rather than rejecting the Lord, sets forth the way that we are to, uh, to prosper in one sense. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. The contrast throughout the psalm is not so much of the righteous and the wicked, but of the wicked and those that trust the Lord. Uh, the Lord is wonderfully gracious. The Lord receives sinners to himself on the basis of our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus has come and suffered and died in the place of sinners that we can be accepted by God merely because we have turned and put our wholehearted trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He, David is not saying you must be perfect 
Uh, he speaks of uh, the righteous stumbling uh, and falling. The steps uh, of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. That he contrasts the wicked with those who graciously, who humbly put their trust in the Lord. And the Lord invites any and all to trust him. Uh, and it is not a, a, a way of merit, of earning salvation, but of a humble trust, acknowledgement of our own need, and, but of our trust in the Lord. And the promises are very precious. Trust in the Lord and do good. I think that simply means that our trust is not to be just an empty profession, but a genuine faith that shows itself in simple terms in, in doing good, uh, in, in, in not in perfection, but in seeking to live out our Christian faith sincerely. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You will be secure. You will dwell in the land, not necessarily in the palace, but as an Israelite, dwell in the promised land, be kept by the Lord. And the same, I believe, for every individual in this world that trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ. So shalt thou dwell in the land. You will be secure, protected, and verily thou shalt be fed. I must confess, I read this years ago as a young believer, and I've never found it false. I've not sought uh, sort of riches, going after riches, uh, but the Lord has fulfilled it. And for all of us who have put our trust in him, uh, his, our security, this is far better to have our security in him, and he will fulfill his gracious promise. Uh, again, it's not promising a palace or feasting, but security and the necessary food, whatever is needful. I, sometimes I wish I could remember having a very kindly uh, line manager uh, years ago, a Nigerian lady who would be placing her trust in, uh, in the lottery, as many do. She wasn't well off. She was very perfectly capable, wasn't well off. And, uh, and people think there is my hope, as it were, in the lottery. Far, far better to trust the Lord and to simply put our trust in him. And he will watch over us and care and make sure we have everything that we need. He goes on, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. We may see, but I want to do this or that, or I have so many plans or ambitions. Well, the, David would say, delight yourself in the Lord. Uh, put him first, put his values, his ways first in your life, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will, in one sense, it will inevitably probably mean a, a slight change in what we desire and what we want to do, uh, but he will bless uh, and uphold uh, and, in one sense, fulfill those wholesome and right desires, but put the Lord first, delight in him. Uh, and another similar promise, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Commit your plans to him, submit to him, he, uh, and trust in him and he shall bring it to pass. It's far better to uh, commit our way to the Lord and uh, leave it with him uh, and he and trust in him uh, and he will bring what we commit to him to pass. It's far better to have 
from the Lord rather than to engineer it all by our own work, as it were, without the Lord. But precious, precious blessings. And uh, he goes on, he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. He will, in one sense, vindicate you uh, as his child, as his servant. He will protect you, though men, uh, we have little uh, guarantee of justice in this, in this world, but the Lord will protect uh, and uh, uphold our cause. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Don't be troubled by those who are clever and uh, deceitful probably bring wicked devices to pass. They may do well in this life, in this world. They may well do so, but don't be moved from your trust in the Lord by them. And on the other hand, if you are in one sense hurt by them, cease from anger and forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise, to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Don't, uh, again, another temptation, we are uh, to take matters into our own hands. Uh, the young often, it is they who are moved to, to revolution, to, to violent overthrow, uh, but he says, cease from anger and forsake wrath. There is wickedness in the world. There is injustice. There is corruption. But leave it in one sense. Don't follow it. Uh, but uh, leave it with the Lord. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And one could look, I won't. Uh, dwell long on it, but you could look time and time again to history, can you not? And men will come and be angry uh, and seek to overthrow uh, or to conquer others, but ultimately they will not be uh, very long uh, in power. Uh, and I was, I was drawn, uh, my attention drawn that uh, in Rome, what do we have there now? We have all the ancient monuments of the Roman Empire are essentially in ruins. And the Colosseum, the Forum, all those places. Uh, and what is in their place? Well, I know they are misused and I know they are perverted in their use. But if you are told Nero uh, or, or other uh, Diocletian or other persecutors that there would instead be churches and uh, uh, seminaries and uh, uh, monasteries and so on that we do find in Rome now. They would have been uh, astounded, uh, but the Lord overturns and overthrows and all the ancient uh, ruins that we find in the Near East, Nineveh, Babylon and so on, destroyed no more. The Lord has done it, and uh, those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. The Lord will fulfill his promise that the meek shall inherit the earth. Uh, and here he sets forth, firstly, really, uh, how we are to be, to trust in the Lord and to have our faith in him uh, and to look to him to fulfill our, our plans, our, our desires in the best sense, uh, and to wait upon him. Uh, and far better than just to take everything into our own hands uh, and to walk contrary to the Lord. Uh, but he goes on, he... Uh, uh, the, the, the contrasts uh, begin... Uh, verse 12, the wicked plotteth against the just 
and gnasheth upon him with his teeth, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. The Lord laughs at the wicked. They plot and plan against the just, against the one that trusts in the Lord. They have armaments and so on, but the Lord laughs at them, and the Lord knows he seeth that his day is coming. Uh, he knows the end of these people, and though they, again, may seem to be very mighty, may seem to have everything on their side, yet ultimately they will come to nothing. It's hearing again a brethren who, who monitor the situation in India, saying that uh, there are many more now attacks on Indian believers, often with the, the uh, police on their side, uh, people going to disrupt meetings and uh, the police coming behind them. And instead of arresting the disruptors, the violent, they arrest the believers because they say you are forcing people to, be, to become Christians. Uh, and they do it partly because the Hindu nationalists are in power. But the Lord knows and the Lord sees and the Lord will uh, in due time bring it to a stop and will vindicate and protect his people as he has done in this land uh, many years before uh, and the Lord has upheld and protected and blessed for many centuries now but the Lord is over all these things and therefore he says verse 16 a little that a righteous man hath is better than the arms than the riches of many wicked for the arms of the wicked shall be broken but the Lord upholdeth the righteous the Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time in the days of famine. They shall be satisfied. It is better to have a little with the Lord to be provided for consistently than to have great riches. Even the world in one sense sees this. Even unbelievers uh, can see this. Uh, that uh, I read two uh, articles recently. A lady, an American lady, whose husband is a banker, but who the lady is an American, and she says she is obviously well aware of the banking culture uh, in America uh, and uh, how it is all-consuming. Uh, the, the, the work is like a cult, it takes over everything. And, uh, but she made this comment that uh, after 30 years in the UK, I've developed a fondness for what I call disambition or, or sort of non-ambition. Some of my husband's cleverest Oxford friends have never amounted to much professionally. They might have popped out a novel or run a small business, but they, didn't, they don't in any way feel inferior. They could easily have been bankers or lawyers. They just couldn't be bothered to. Many of the masters of the universe I know, meaning that the American bankers, are now retiring and facing an exist existential crisis. But those who've suffered lifelong from disambition are perfectly content. They have hobbies. They built a life around something other than work. They have savings. They're part of a community. Their first and last wives have not facelifted themselves to within an inch of life and their children aren't in therapy. I wouldn't call that losing. And uh, she's not a believer, but she can see the vanity of, of just all out for the world. And uh, it is true, there is, it is much more precious uh, and particularly to have the Lord and keeping us and having other things of more, more value than money or, or esteem 
in the world. But uh, I must go on, I must come to this uh, promise in verse 25, because it is so, uh, so encouraging. David goes on, he contrasts the, the, uh, the wicked as borrowing and not paying back, and the others, the, those that trust the Lord, lending. But then this precious observation, verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Now, I cannot say, but I don't know. I would agree with David. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, meaning they are totally bereft in this life, nor his seed begging bread, nor have I seen the seed of the righteous begging bread. Uh, there, are, there is the seed of believers who are not Christians, who are not believers themselves, but I have never seen them begging bread. Uh, they are provided for and kept by the Lord's gracious promise here. If we wish for security, not just for ourselves, but for our children, it is much better to trust the Lord. Uh, and this promise will be fulfilled. Uh, and, and he simply says, this is my experience. I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken noise seed begging bread and as a king with much contact with many people uh, and obviously a wise discerning king a wonderful observation uh, that it is far better there is much better security in the lord than in the ways of this world certainly there's nothing wrong with uh, seeking we must provide for our own uh, and to seek to uh, make our children secure and that's what will be the motivation for many in the world but it is best of all far better far more secure to trust the lord and to walk with him and he will see that all our, our family is our is secure but uh goes on further further uh contrasts uh, depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints they are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom it's this contrast of the two characters and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. Uh, the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him, but the Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. So precious, again, a precious promise. We are not perfect, but the Lord is our righteousness. We may make mistakes, but the Lord is our righteousness uh, and he will not condemn us. Uh, I remember, it may sound a foolish thing, but uh, going to be a clerk in, a, in an army office, uh, and I cannot say I am the most accurate filer, uh, and I was quite frightened that these army officers would come down on me uh, like a ton of bricks for my mistakes. And uh, it may seem a simple little foolish thing, but I trusted the Lord. Uh, he is our righteousness. And they never uh, came down upon me hard, uh, never condemned, never actually lost the job. Well, I never, by God's grace, made a serious enough mistake. But God watches over his children and not suffer them to be are unjustly condemned. Uh, but just briefly, uh, the last verses, verse 39 and 40. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. 
The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. We face a great day of trouble. All men face it at death. We face eternal sorrow. But the Lord's promise uh, is that he will deliver all those that trust in him. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. He is the one who will bring them safely uh, into eternal glory. Their trust is not in themselves, but in the Lord, and particularly in their great advocate on high, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, may he help us that our trust would be in him. If we haven't put our trust in him, he is a faithful, merciful, gracious God uh, and worthy of our trust and far better to know and love him than all the world be against us uh, and, uh, and scorn us, far better to have him as our God and as our saviour and uh, may he help us, may he help others that they likewise would seek and find him uh, and find him for themselves. Amen. Our last hymn is number 788, Thy life was given for me.